What's up, everybody? You know, one of the Black Diamond Services. We are out at a commercial job. We got two today for the same company. Two different locations. And then I got an estimate later in the day. familiar with this carpet. It's been around the channel for a while. So we are out in Turlock for this location. And then we'll be heading to Patterson, California afterwards to do the second one. Area, so it gets the most use. So it's pretty soiled right here from the rolly chair moving back and forth and then getting up and moving around. And they chose the right colors. Because this carpet and even the brighter ones that we cleaned, they don't look bad at all. Then when you start digging into it, you see the change. And you're like, oh, it actually was a little dirty. Or one of them we didn't stop in a few weeks back. I mean, there were some stains, but otherwise it didn't look horrible. Then once we got into it, it was actually in pretty bad shape. We hadn't cleaned it before, uh, at least that location, and once we got into it, I mean, we took, took some extra passes over it to really get it to shape up, and the water when we drained it was black, but it didn't look that dirty on the carpet. I believe it was the same color as this one. And it's just like the entire walking area was almost all just about the same in appearance besides some stains from like probably coffee. So when you see me doing residential jobs, even I'm showing some videos, you've seen me doing like what I call double passes, which is one back one forward and then one back, one forward kind of thing. So technically four passes over the same area, but I just call it a double pass because I count the up and down as one. So anyways, I do that a lot of times with a lot of carpets because sometimes I feel like an extra over makes all the difference unless that carpet's in really good shape isn't that dirty or they have it cleaned more frequently but that process may change a little bit here in the future because I'm getting my next van hopefully soon and the machine has a high, the higher lift and CFN so what that means is uh, this van has a max output of 13 inches of lift and so what that means is it's pulling that's what's pulling it out of the carpet and the CFMs is what's taking it back to the machine so the other one that I'm getting will max out at 20 inches of lift and I believe the CFMs on that machine are, are higher than this one so that what I'm excited about that the most is it should help me clean faster. So I may be able to cut down from that 
dual passing, like I said, two up, two down each to half of that because the lift is so much higher and the CFMs are a bit higher. So I'm gonna be drying the carpet out faster on top of that. So that's the bonus is um, the company that makes the machine is saying that they can do uh, get dry times as quick as one to two hours depending on the situation I'm, I'm sure but that's pretty impressive so I'm looking forward to cutting dry times down significantly because right now my average where it starts to dry to the touch is generally around four to five hours. So I'm cutting it at least in half. So people are gonna, are gonna love that, that they can get their carpet hot water extracted and have only a couple hour dry time. getting here being done with this one we just basically have the front lobby area left after this walk path I don't know if you can tell from the camera but this area right here I'm needing a kind of dual pass because I can see dirt coming through still on the, the second go around Usually once I start getting closer to the front of these offices, uh, it requires a little extra. This is where everybody walks in and everybody walks past that door to go to one of these cubicles. So it usually requires a little more attention. Once I get that van, I'll do a reveal of that, that setup, and then you'll officially see why I'm so stoked about it. You can't wait to have it. We're buttoning up a few things, forgetting it. So bear with me, because with COVID and everything, it's made it really difficult to get, get a hold of stuff. But we are nearing a change in that. What's up everybody? So we're at the second uh, location here. As you can see there's some little spots uh, on these particular chairs. They were only wanting me to do the chairs that actually visually look like they can use it. So there's only six of these. Uh, I better see, make sure that's just an indentation. No, that's, okay, it's got some stuff on the edge here. So we got seven chairs that need some attention. Um, and then of course we're doing all the carpet. I already did two of the chairs up front. And Adam's pre-spraying the carpet, getting it prepped for cleaning. But none of these swivel chairs are getting done. Uh, there's no visual stains or anything that we have found on any of these, so it doesn't, they don't want us to do them unless they actually need to be cleaned, which is understandable. But yeah, we found seven chairs with some stains. I did two up front already, and then I got the other five back here, which is these four sitting out, and of course that one right there that I just looked at uh, with you guys. So, we can get this going. Um, this is a finished leather, so I am using some truck mail forms, leather cleaner and conditioner. This stuff does a great job. It does brighten up the seats, make them look better. Um, I think even if they weren't really dirty, the appearance of them gets brightened a little with the leather cleaner and conditioner. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. And then Adam's going to finish getting set up for the rest of the carpet 
and by the time I finish these chairs, he'll probably be part way done with that up, upper front lobby area of the carpet or close to it. So that's what we've got going on today. Um, and then we got a job after this, a uh, small little thing. I'm gonna go check on and see if we can help fix for a client of ours. Um, and then that's pretty much it. So appreciate you guys watching. I may get a little more video today. We'll see uh, of this job. Just depends on how time goes. But otherwise, that's it. All right, so I wanted to show you guys what it looks like afterwards. One of the chairs here and what came off. You can see it was a little dirty. And it's just this cover here. And then there's just a little bit on the side here on, on each of it. So definitely can use it. Uh, it's the same idea as the other two chairs I did up front. I mean, here's the, the rag for that. So, it's not the best looking rag, but I mean, you can see, look at the left side to the right side. They're clearly dirty. Um, the ones that have staining on them. So, it makes a difference to clean and condition your, your finished leathers. Uh, may not look like they are that dirty but this is what we got off on this particular chair right there and so the difference is pretty good the chair definitely looks brighter just got to touch it up some more but otherwise pretty easy to do all right everybody so we have finished all the cubicles of the carpet what we got left is a little bit of this open area here and then the back break room area. I got those seven chairs done. Adam was working on the uh, front portion of the carpet with the cubicle areas. And once we finish all this up, And we would take a look at a job back in Oakdale. And that'll be the end of the day. It's currently September 14th on a Monday. We got really a really full week ahead of us. I think we're averaging three, three and sometimes more jobs a day, depending on the size of them. Most average is, is three, unless they're smaller and not too far from each other. What we're trying to do is get some more house cleaning jobs going too. We're slammed in carpet tile and upholstery side of our business, but we do still have some openings for uh, house cleaning as of uh, this week and next week. So we're trying to get that all scheduled out for for that side of the business. But I think once um, everything gets back to normal, whenever that is, we're gonna hit a growth spurt. So we're trying to prepare for that. Obviously we need the second van. Um, and we're working on that, getting that over here. It's already built. Everything's put together and inside of it, from some starting chemicals to all the tools needed to just roll it right out and do the job. The first thing that we're going to do when we get it back in town is have it wrapped so it looks similar to my van that I got currently. The only difference is we did get a high top, and uh, so it's going to look a little different when it's a, a Nissan instead of the Chevy Express. I 
kind of wish Chevy would make the exact same van and just make it a high top because uh, from what I gathered on information the Chevy high top or a Chevy high top if it was the same exact van as their current model just taller it would be able to pull more weight and just about carry more weight than all the current ones that I've seen out. If, it, if I didn't need the high top, I'd probably just get another Chevy because in my past 11 years, um, that's what I'm used to from where I used to work and what I currently have. And they have lasted quite some time. I've got vans that the carpet machine that used to be in them ran off of the engine, meaning it had a PTO shaft that ran from the carpet machine down to the van's engine and those vans had some of them had like 175,000 miles on them and what you also gotta take into account is when that carpet machine's running the van's engine's running at about I think somewhere between four and 5,000 RPMs so technically at 175,000 miles the van probably has at least double you gotta consider how many miles you technically would have traveled on that engine and how fast you'd actually be going if you were running at four or five thousand RPMs. So I just longevity wise. But um, yeah I needed a high top because this model uh, or not model not the van itself but the carpet machine I was going to have a 100 gallon belly tank for fresh water. So if I get to go to a job and there's no water source or the water's off, I could still clean it. And then it has a 130 gallon waste tank, which is 30 gallons more than what I currently have. So now again, if I have a commercial job or a, uh, I should say an apartment complex where there's nowhere where I can drain water, I don't have to worry about it because 130 gall gallons is quite a bit. And so I'll be able to get through an entire day without having to drain any water, multiple jobs. And I've already done that with 100 gallons. Actually 30 gallons. I can expect to probably do a full day um, or at least a large, very large tile job. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to keep this going. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give me a like and a comment below. Stay tuned for more. Bonus. Let's take a look at the filter. Staples. Some other miscellaneous junk in there. Not horrible, but definitely caught quite a bit of stuff. And then there's stuff here too. This is why I love this filter because all this junk would actually make it into my van's filter, which the holes in there are a little bit bigger than the one that's actually beneath this uh, netting here, the filter bag. So all this stuff would get into the waste tank and then periodically you gotta basically spray out the waste tank to get some of this stuff that's built up in the bottom. So this filter blocks all of that from getting in there so I don't have to clean out my waste tank like like most would if you didn't have a filter like this so it's worth the money because the filter inside the van and then there's a filter inside the waste tank I have to clean those out probably a fourth of the amount of times as I normally would maybe even less than that so definitely worth it it's the boss filter you can get them from truck mount forums if you're a cleaner 
highly recommend it. I'm running two two inch hoses from the back here up to here. So I'm running both of those outlets instead of just one. And then in the front, I cap off one of them. Feel like I'm getting increased CFMs doing that for sure. And then when I'm dual wanding, I just take the cap off the front one and hook up the second hose to there. And it captures all the crap from the other one too. So it's def definitely worth it.